Assalamu alaikum join me today as we study the heart and since two hearts are better than one let's win hearts by studying the osteo of the heart Okay so beginning with the heart we talk about what we see what do we see the chambers of the heart what are these chambers first one right atrium, right atrium then right, right, right ventricle okay going posteriorly left, left atrium, atrium and left, left ventricle. ventricle now I want you to remember in the atrium there are two extensions of the atrium known as well done so it's a ear like projection known as the auricles. auricles right auricle left auricle this entire anterior part of the left atrium is known as the auricle remember that but only this part of the right atrium is known as the right auricle remember that okay next what do we have let's talk about these grooves that we can see on the external feature Um, hello what do i see okay yeah so these are the this is the anterior interventricular groove between the two ventricles then we have the atrial ventricular groove between the atria and the ventricle this is on the right side and the left side also known as a coronary sulcus because it lodges the artery of that same name also the veins are going to be lying in these grooves posteriorly we have the posterior interventricular groove between the two ventricles and then atrial ventricular grooves posteriorly the posterior coronary coronary sulci okay now we have the great vessels what happens is basically the entire system is how right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from upper body through superior vena cava from lower body through inferior vena cava of course and then this deoxygenated blood is pumped okay wait a uh, superior vena cava is going to be formed by these two veins these are the right and left brachiocephalic veins posteriorly it is going to be getting the tributary of a zygous vein Uh, this is the pulmonary trunk, which is arising from the right ventricle, through which the deoxygenated blood is going to go to the lungs and get oxygenized or whatever you call it, oxygenated. This is the pulmonary artery. Uh, the pulmonary artery is blue. Now what happens is the deoxygenated blood has entered the lungs and it will the lungs will bring back oxygenated blood into left sided chamber. This is the left atrium. It will be received in these pulmonary veins. Then this will oxygenated blood is pumped into the left ventricle. through which now the entire body is going to receive oxygenated blood and be happy forever a very very muscular chamber this is known as the left ventricle this pumps the blood outside to the entire body by the aorta and this has an ascending arch and a descending part as you all know we all know the branches of the aorta right brachiocephalic uh, then what do left we have left common carotid and left uh, carotid is going towards your head or neck or upper limb So straight to head, head and neck well done and what about the subclavian going, going towards, towards the upper limb all right okay now let's talk about the vessels that you can see that supply the heart all right these are the vessels that were leaving the heart to supply other people heart is a very selfless organ it has great vessels for other people but for itself it has these tiny vessels these are the coronary arteries and the cardiac veins so let's talk about this artery right here this is the right coronary artery the right coronary artery right here it gives the right marginal artery so if the pin is over here it's the right marginal artery going posteriorly it gives the posterior interventricular artery now determining which artery the right or left is going to give the posterior interventricular artery is known as the cardiac dominance all right so in most of the cases it's the right coronary artery giving the posterior interventricular artery so what is this artery posterior interventricular artery because it's in the interventricular groove of the posterior side okay so there's a right coronary artery and then we have left coronary artery you know left coronary artery instantly when it emerges it divides into two so the two it divides into one goes anteriorly descends in the interventricular groove this is known as the lad left anterior descending and left circumflex so left coronary artery cannot remain single no offense but like it has to divide into two so lad and the left circumflex left circumflex once again will give a left marginal going posteriorly this gives if this gives the posterior interventricular artery it is known as left cardiac dominance but in this case this person is right cardiac dominant unfortunately or fortunately i do not know you guys decide talk about the veins the anterior interventricular groove contains this vein this is known as a great cardiac vein most important vein with the lad lad is the most commonly blocked artery of the in the myocardial infarction all right remember that so just with this important artery will lie the great cardiac vein in the posterior interventricular groove we have this vein known as the middle cardiac vein this enters into this important sinus or the important venous channel of the heart coronary sinus also the great enters over here as well okay what else what do we have here this is the oblique vein of the left atrium well done the veins we can see these these are the anterior cardiac veins and other veins vena cordis minimi we cannot see over here all right so uh, one important things in the right atrium is sulcus terminalis will lie over here on the upper part of circle terminalis is the sa node what is sa node so just like my mic we have a pacemaker of the heart mic what does the mic do it transmits impulses so that you guys can hear me well and what does the pacemaker of the heart do which is sa node it 
make sure your heart pumps blood you get what i'm saying okay good niche aa jao school bhi to lagna hai yaar video mein so about the internal features of the heart so uh, first we have the right atrium most important uh, structure of the heart of the internal features it's going to be the right atrium so we we have this uh, anterior rough part so you can see it right here this anterior rough part is composed of muscular pectinati posterior smooth part the posterior smooth part contains the opening of the coronary sinus so the pin will be placed over here remember opening of the coronary sinus uh, approximately where you can see the atrioventricular uh, orifice that's where the coronary sinus will be okay what is this this is the interatrial septal area so it is the fossa ovalis this was in your uh, birth or embryologic period this was open now it's closed so fossa ovalis anything that covers the margin it is the limbus ovalis but they'll probably just ask about the fossa ovalis anything else these are the openings of the uh, veins all right now let's talk about this is the atrioventricular or orifice which valve lies over here uh, tricuspid valve r for tri has r so Hello, I'm back. It's on the right side. This is the right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. In the ventricles, we have these prominent ridges, and especially the ones that the pins will be placed on will be on the papillary muscles. So do not forget. There is this interventricular septum. You can see the walls of the ventricles. The right wall is thinner compared to the left wall. And this, my friends, is where I realized my microphone wasn't working this whole time. Such is my life. But I still won't buy a new microphone. Oh. <laughs> left, uh, left chamber and left chamber. You can see the most prominent thing is the uh, papillary muscles. Uh, they'll ask you about this valve. It's obviously if it's left side, so it's aortic valve. And the right side, there is the pulmonary valve. That's all you need to know about the ospi of the heart. Really hope I made it easy for you. I hope I healed your heart by teaching you the heart. So thank you so much for watching.